Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. This is the removal of a yellow jacket nest from inside of a customer's house in the ceiling of their garage. It turned out to be a super nest. This nest was absolutely humongous and it had been up there for at least two years. German yellow jacket, um, which make big nests anyway. If you haven't subscribed already to my channel, please consider doing so and hit that bell notification down below. That way you guys can get updated anytime I do post a video. So here's the nest removal guys, plus my chickens and the squirrely squirrel. Here's the video, check it out. All right, so this is where the yellow jackets were coming in. They were coming in through the siding, um, right above the garage and right below the nursery bedroom. So this is inside the nursery, and you can see that there were yellow jackets consolidated all around the windows. Um, there's new queens and new males right there. Uh, there's one worker, it looks like. Um, there's a couple new queens there. So the homeowner was thinking they were coming in through the window jam, but I told her that 99% of the time they're not coming in through the window jam. They're coming in through a um, hole in the wall or a hole in the floor. Or something. So we're coming up through this register and I found by looking all the way down in there see the activity down in that crack? There's a nest down in there. We come up through here so they're actually in the floor and uh which is actually the ceiling of the garage so i'm gonna cut into that and get them out for them all right it's always the first thing that i do is i listen very very closely to where um the sounds are coming from from this nest now i couldn't really hear anything in the ceiling because this was uh double drywalled so I really just had to rely on my visual acuity is what I could see through that register and I cut in right below the nest. But this nest is absolutely humongous. This thing was about four and a half feet long. It was about 22 inches wide and probably another 20 inches tall. It was so big. <laughs> the, um, the comb inside of it was buried into about probably 10 inches layer of envelope. So what you're seeing here is just literally just the bottom surface. So there's a few yellow jackets walking around it, but 90% of them were inside right near the comb. So I, I, as I started kind of like crunching in with my fingers, you, uh, you start to see some of them coming out, but not, not nearly as many as you would think. So I knew I wasn't right at the comb. Um, pretty much any time, even during the busiest part of the season, you'll see some coming out of there, but you're not going to see a lot until you hit the comb. So there's the comb. And then this is where the activity starts. Again, this is a late, late in the season nest, so this isn't max capacity. So there's probably maybe a third of the population in this nest than what there was in the middle of the season. But you still see that there's a lot of activity in this nest. And there's still a lot of larvae in there. just taking my time too because I didn't want what I didn't want to have happen was um, I didn't want to just start just assuming that everything was slowing down for the season and then start crunching into it and then having be completely engulfed in yellow jackets um, even though these are German yellow jackets they don't really latch on um, but towards the end of the season you really just don't know how they're going to behave <coughs> because they might be hungry they might be uh, you know, they might be really defensive for one reason or another, so I'm really just cautious um, anytime I'm going into a nest. I never go into their uh, into a, a removal overly confident, um, other than the fact that, you know, I know what I'm doing. So just a little bit of vacuuming. Um, this is a prime um, example of what I mentioned in my other videos about vacuuming and why I choose the vacuum I choose. Uh, this vacuum, since it does not have a super suction like a mega vacuum, it doesn't completely ruin all the, the envelope and all the um, 
and all the comb. I don't want this thing sucking off pieces of comb at a time because I, like I, you know, you guys know I want to feed these to my chickens, so um, I don't want a bunch of it getting sucked up into the vacuum. Um, so just kind of getting a few shots here of the process. You can see how many are just coming pouring out of this this uh, bit of comb that's left up in there. I haven't even started tearing the comb out. I've literally just been tearing out the envelope. So I've probably gone through about 10 inches of envelope just to get to the comb. Given the opportunity, this thing would have been even bigger next year. With all the larvae that's inside there, that have been plenty of larvae to keep them, um, keep the adults fed and happy until uh, until the following spring when they start venturing out and foraging. And knowing what I know now, back in the day when I would see yellow jackets flying around that weren't queens in the beginning of spring, I always wondered where they come from. Because if, if there was no queen to found a new nest in time to start laying new eggs and then hatching, you wouldn't be seeing young adults flying around outside until, you know, probably later in the spring, early summer. And I never understood that. Well, knowing that there's such nests like this that are actually growing in the middle of the winter and there's still still uh, female workers inside the nest alive, it makes sense now that they'd be going out and foraging in the beginning of spring and you'd be seeing those active um, sterile females. So just a couple shots showing the amount of envelope that just came out of this hole. And that's only just a part of what it looked like. Um, I'm excited for you guys to see the pile at the end. The pile is almost like like sweet, like raking up a pile of leaves. It was so big. So you can see, look at all the workers in between those comb. So there's still a lot of activity in this nest. Again, even though I know what I'm doing, I'm just very cautious about just reaching in and reaching your arm into the unknown and pulling out a massive nest. You just, I don't know what's behind it. I just got to be, keep all my bases covered. Look at the size of that thing. And that's just a part of it. That's not even the whole thing. That's about a third. A third to two thirds. So in my last video, when you guys were seeing me take care of the eastern yellow jackets, you can see how this envelope in this comb is so strong in comparison. The eastern yellow jackets comb is very brittle. And you'll notice that the, the, when I touch this stuff, it doesn't just fall apart. And the envelope kind of behaves a lot very similar to the bald-faced hornet or the Dolica vespula maculata species, where it's really strong paper and really strong comb. getting the last little bit of comb that was in there. A <laughs> little bit. The workers and the new queens and males will stay with the comb. They're not going to really try to swarm out past me now um, at this time of year. So it, it looks more like they float around. They're not like super aggressive. But this species isn't a good tail for that anyway because the species isn't super aggressive to begin with. Um, they would swarm heavier than this normally in the middle of the season, though. So just scraping out as much as I can, getting as much of the envelope out of the cavity um, before I spray in there. But just, it's just crazy the amount of envelope that was in this. I was just blown away. It was a very daunting task because when you have to clean up all this space and you don't want to leave a bunch of stuff in there because there might be adults inside of there as well, so if you leave it in the cavity space, they're going to find their way into the nursery, and that's kind of the whole reason why we're getting this out for the, for the most part, because they were coming up through into the nursery, and the homeowners obviously didn't want their baby getting stung. So you can see, uh, as they say, they're all coming out of the woodwork, so as I'm clearing out the envelope, there's a heck of a lot more appearing to me, 
um, just because they're they're all through this cavity space. There's not they're not just in that one um, rafter gap. Like they're in, they're crawling around all over up inside that that crawl space. So trying to vacuum up these stragglers is like peeing in the ocean because you just you know that you're not going to get all of them. So you end up just having to spray up in there and then just sealing the uh, sealing the drywall. Look at the pile of that envelope. That's just I was just blown away when I started raking that up at the end. It's like man, this is like raking leaves. That nest filled up that freaking Rubbermaid bin. That just blows my mind. All right, so getting the nest home, you know me. I like to take them apart and uh, show you guys the uh, the differences in the structures and the adults. Male, 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 worker. Though these males are a lot longer, they have longer antenna. Female workers are shorter and shorter antenna. Male worker, male worker, worker. This is worker cell with queen cells attached to the side. So there's a male. So this is worker cells to about here. And then these are all queen cells. Okay, there's a queen, there's a male, so you can see them side by side, male, queen, queen, worker, male, male, queen, female worker. And there's still some larvae in this comb, so this is all, as you can see, there's little fringes on this comb. So these were already hatched once, and now there's new larvae inside, so they're being reused. Moving day, Humphrey. I gotta get you out of my piano. So I'm gonna get down in here and get the nest out. This is a squirrel nest removal. I don't know what you've torn up to make this nest, Humphrey. But it is a doozy. Try to reuse the same materials he uses, and that way he'll accept the new home a little better. Got peanuts in here and everything. Sunflower seeds. Oh, I don't know if I want to know what all he used. All right, let's take this down. All right, so this is me putting together Humphrey's new house. So there was a hole through the barn wall. It was a, a hole that was cut in for a pipe. 
and I just mounted this uh, platform to it, cut the hole a little bit wider so he could get in there, and uh, then on the other side it goes into my barn, and I wanted to build him a box, so I used this uh, old drawer that I had from an old cabinet that I had built, and uh, decided to cut it down. I'm doing like a quick release mounting on there with a wire and just attaching it there so that way anytime I need to get in there, clean it out or whatever, then I can just undo that wire and then uh, pull the box down and clean out his box. Alright, let's go get Humphrey. Come on, squirrel. Come on, squirrel. gonna work. Hey, squirrel, squirrel. Hey, squirrel, squirrel. Sun beating on your face, isn't this nice? Yes, I got some peanuts, but you gotta wait. You squirrel, squirrel. You squirrel, squirrel. You already got one. How'd you get one already? Hey squirrel! Hey squirrel! Hey little squirrel! Hey Humphrey! Hey squirrel! Hey Humphrey! Hey Humphrey! Hey Humphrey! Squirrely squirrel. Oh, look at you make yourself at home already. That's a good squirrely squirrel. Oh, you want to eat that nut? You want to eat that nut? Hey, squirrely squirrel. Hey, Humphrey. That's it. Come up here, squirrely squirrel. Here. There you go. I hope that hole's big enough for you. It doesn't look like it. Squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> Are you liking this new home already? There's a lot of places to roam. Nap, squirrel, squirrel. Hmm. You just take no nap. That's a good squirrel, squirrel. That's a good squirrel, squirrel. Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have suggestions for future videos or any kind of content you guys like to see me cover in the future, also drop in the comments. Let me know. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit the bell notification so you guys can get some updates every time I, sh I do post a video. If you guys like to support my crowdfunding campaign, the link will be in the description for where you guys can go to donate to my channel uh, to help me improve the quality that I have been doing over the course of the last couple months. 
I also just launched my new Instagram and Twitter account. So if you guys like to follow me on there for any kind of little tidbits and updates and things like that, you guys can uh, join and follow me there. And that way you guys can get some like behind the scenes content uh, that I don't really post in my videos. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in to check out my videos and supporting my channel. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.